one now live hello hello everyone and welcome to good job by double double uh, i'm not gonna keep you guys waiting for much longer uh we're just gonna dive right into it so i'm handing it over to double here with uh, good job uh, new game any percent all right thank you cruel and yes as he so eloquently stated welcome to good job this is a isometric puzzle game with a job office theme to it that's all you need to know uh, need to know beforehand the rest of the mechanics and everything I'll get into when the run is actually going uh, because despite this game only being about eight months old there has been a ton of strats discovered for each and every single puzzle some more risky than others so I'm gonna I'm just gonna do not do the very risky, very fast strats, but do the, the, the somewhat risky, somewhat marathon safe, somewhat fast strats. But they're still going to be pretty fast. So, I've pressed A, but you might have noticed that the game's not going. This is one of those games that confers an action when you let go of the button and not when you press it. So, I'm ready to start. So, tech, uh, get ready to start time, and we're going to go here in 3, 2, 1. One, go! Alright, so first piece strat. Hold, the, hold A to skip the cutscene. Alright, so this is what the game looks like. It's very colorful. And yeah, our first task here in Floor Zero Reception is to get the work uniform. There's a bunch of overworld movement for this as well. And we're going to move up to floor 1. Very important to let go of the stick because even though the upper floors aren't unlocked yet, you can still travel to them with the elevator. Now you have 101, 102, 103 here. All three levels are open for the beginning. So we can just optimize overworld movement and do them out of order. So we're going to be starting with 102 here. Yeah, this is how each puzzle starts. It loads in and shows you uh, shows you what the objective is and the key components of it. Now, the a key point for this game is achieve the objective. It doesn't matter how. You know, you might want to have good work ethics in the in a uh, in the office, but we're just gonna just launch that through the wall right there. Catapulting objects is uh, quite the theme in this game. Something tells me that this isn't exactly safe workplace environments or something like that. Nope. But hey, if the game says good job, you get to move on. That's all we care about. Alright, so that was 102. That is actually a pretty tough strat. It's pretty precise to aim it, so I'm glad I actually got it. There's a... There's a Fairly, fairly nice backup. Alright, so here we have got 101, the, the perceived first level of the game. Uh, set up the projector. So we're going to repeat the theme that we just saw, and... We're going to do another, another cable catapult, or launch as we call it in the community. So unplug this. Now this launch is a lot harder than the one I did previously. Yeah, that's not where I wanted that to go. Luckily the projector is close by, so I can just pick it up and try again. That's the wrong button. I meant to pause. Uh, there's a command here called reset player. That puts you back at the start of the stage. And hey, look, projector's right here. Alright, so now I'm going to do a backup strat here, plug that in, and then set up this catapult here. And I'm gonna, just going to use the stairs here to catapult this projector into the room. Alright, that's the second one, 51. If you get the, uh, 
The optimal strategy, you'll get around 30 seconds. Yeah, this run is very volatile with its strats. Uh, things can go very wrong with even with small mistakes or misplacements of objects. Alright, so here we've got 103. 103 taxes. So there's a meeting going on, but a couple of the workers just kind of sneak off to do their own thing. Also, yes, that is what you... That the uh, object with the blue and red things next to it, that is what you think it is. So clever use of game mechanics right here. Grab it and then just let it slap the door. Slap it and break the door. And then we can drag this guy out. Gonna place him there. And here I thought your work ethics were poor. These workers are even worse. Exactly. So it's our job to <laughs> to get them back into the meeting. Gonna place that guy there as part of a setup. Gonna get this rolling chair here to pick up this guy. You know, and if you're if you're enjoying all these destructive launches, uh, I've got good news for you. We've got more. Uh, he's actually in kind of a bad spot, because I need to have him on this side. And this is another tricky launch. Alright, that worked. Although, gather the workers just went down in the top left, so I knocked a couple of workers out of the area. So I'll have to just have to put them back in once I get to the end. So I'm going to try to push two guys at the same time by dragging one and running into the other. Uh, okay. So yeah, this guy that I moved first got knocked out of the area. If I can get him to sit down and put him back in. And then if I can uh, get this guy to sit in a chair. And not sit in my ch uh, chair myself. Sitting in chair, sitting on chairs is like the worst speedrun wise. This is totally normal office behavior, right? Well, I'm getting stuck on objects. Alright, so the game ranks you on three categories. Time, and because for speedrunning we'll usually get an S rank for time. And then also for damage, uh, damage value and damaged objects. Yeah, damaged objects is the number of uh, objects you damage and each object that you damage can uh, has its own value. And... It's a running theme in the game, in uh, the stages that there's a golden statue around which is worth ten thousand dollars. So if you break that, it, your uh, your damage damage value will Im instantly go up by ten thousand. And that might not seem too interesting for a speed run because we're doing all these fast waste, uh, fast destructive waste. Uh, but uh, there is actually a damageless category for this game. Props to anyone who does that. So I need this bench. I need to get all four of these guys out of the way. And yeah, more clever use of game mechanics here. And I put this chair here. Yeah, we have a. We have it. We have this along the wall, but we wedge the chair in first, and then we can break the door that way. Get the projector here. So while you get this all set up, mind if I butt in with a quick donation? Uh, yeah, it's fine. Most of this stuff is uh, straightforward. Alright, we just got 10 euros from Disturbed Freak with no comment, but thank you very much for the donation. Alright. Yeah, I do, I do have to say that it's very important to stand in the right position to get the correct prompts. I grabbed the wrong bench there for a couple of times. Also very important to grab this... This uh, projector on the right side because there's a chance you can unplug it. Now here's a new mechanic. You can stay in the stage. And what we're going to do is... We're going to pause, press up three times and press A. That selects the to lobby option. And the reason we do this is because... Doing a lobby exit spawns you on top of the elevator. And there's a couple floors... Where beating the last level and then staying in... And doing a lobby exit uh, is actually faster than exiting the stage right away and then walking towards the elevator. Can I find it somewhat ironic that after all of the damage you cost, you just got a promotion? 
Yes, you may. <laughs> Look, I said it before, I'll say it again. We only care about completing the objective. That's what they tell us to do, so we do that. No questions asked. Alright, we need to crush the package. Now, this is one of my favorite levels because it has an ex Because the fast track is extremely silly. You might think of it in a puzzle solving sense, but when you think about it, how can you not... I can't say, take it very seriously, that you're going to be carrying a forklift with a forklift. I need to get in position here, wedge the box out of the way, so it doesn't get in my way later. Put the, put the forklift at forklift down, get in it, uh, and wrap it up by holding... Oh, need to dial back a little bit. By holding uh, reverse and uh, gas at the same time, you rev up your... Uh, you rev up your forklift and you can just accelerate really fast. I am um, misaligned. Okay, there we go. Then we put that here. Drop it in, press the button and boom, gone. And yeah, your, as your rank for the stage is solely determined by the highest rank you get in any of the three categories. So because we S-rank time, we'll get an S-rank for every stage. Despite wrecking a lot of things. So we destroy things and get rewarded for it. Alright, this I would say is the first complicated stage where there's a uh, there's a lot to do and where there's actual routing in uh, actual objective routing so step one is getting this guy right nice chairs can fly apparently so yeah we have to gather 21 workers here next area we go here we use this chair for that guy to sit on Move that out of the way a little bit so we can drag this onto the conveyor belt. And now while that loops around, we're going to get everyone else in this area on the conveyor belt here. So put him just out, out the open window. Put him on the conveyor belt. Put him on the conveyor belt. Put him on the conveyor belt. And just because it's convenient, I'm just going to approach this from this side. That's the wrong thing. I have to hurry up a little bit because I need to get this guy... I was a little slow, so I have to drag him against the current of the conveyor belt a little bit, but it's fine. And yeah, the, this conveyor belt will just take them to the green area. Alright, now we get introduced to another new mechanic, the crane. I'm going to pick up this bench specifically. And pick up these two guys. Rotate it. Line it up here. I'm going to... Get off and move this couch a little bit so it doesn't get stuck on the wall there. And then I need to grab these guys. So yeah, that that bench will auto grab the guys in that area. Then we just swing that swing that pallet in with the three guys on it. And then use this bench and move it very carefully because if it swings too much, uh, I can lose control. Can the workers fall off if it swings too much? Uh, yeah, if the bench breaks, they fall off. I guess while we're transitioning to the next level, I quickly want to remind everybody that you can consider using your free monthly Twitch Prime subscription right here on the ESA channel. You'll get access to all the ESA emotes as well as several BSG emotes. You'll get ad view, uh, ad free viewing uh, for the entire well for the entire month basically, uh, and you get to support both of the events at the same time. Now this is uh, this also of course counts for regular subs as well. So you know be sure to get those in if you have a few uh, a few euros to spare, or if you still have your free monthly subscription and uh, get all of those perks. 
The one thing to note about the crane is you need to hold the bra the button down until uh, it's physically grabbed the object. Uh, I'm going the wrong way. So yeah, first we move that container out of the way. Then we grab this green box. Hold the direction I want to move it in. Once it moves, let go. There we go. As long as it's touching or hovering over the colored area, then it counts. Alright. Uh, Alright, so I'm going to grab this box and swing it over. The best round is to get the container all the way over here and swing out the uh, that purple package using uh, using the rotate and swing the yeah the small purple package out that way. But yeah, that's sort of the backup strat. And yeah, these containers are uh, have very weird physics. You can see you can see how much this is rolling. Like, heavy containers should not be this, uh, this heavy physics-wise, as I'm sure, as I'm sure our host can, uh, can inform us of. I mean, considering I'm an actual physics teacher, yeah, yeah, I can somewhat confirm that you probably shouldn't see them move as much. Unless these are empty containers, in that case, I guess they could work. Well, I mean, we, we have yet to see what's inside of them. More physics, by the way, having it, like, hover like that. As long as it's in the zone in any stretch of the imagination, it counts. Alright, this has overall gone pretty well. Alright, rotate it so I can drag it around. Just swing it on there, and it counts. For most of the stages, as soon as you hit the objective, the stage will give you the win, even if something happens that causes you to not have the objective anymore. Like, if... If that last crate was able was to roll off of the green area, putting me at like seven of eight, out of eight containers, I would still get the win because it showed eight out of eight at some point. Yeah, I haven't really gone over the structure of the game, uh, but I feel like if you've been watching, you. You've pretty uh, you've put it together by yourself already. There's three levels that open up. You can do them in any order, and then once you've beaten all three, the bonus stage unlocks, which we got 04 for memes. So this is 204. A 204 loading knock, and then beating, yeah, beating 04 lets you move on to the next floor, and that's going to be the case for most of the floors in this game. There's nine of them. Um, so there's a very there's more funny physics going on. Press the button to get the elevator down. Grab the extinguisher. This extinguisher is very important. It's going to be your best buddy for this uh, for this level. Wait for the elevator to slowly move up and head this way first. We're going to leave our buddy behind. We'll, we'll, we'll get to have fun with him later. Because we need to grab this package first. I'm trying to get through. Trying to not fall off, because that mean I would, means I would have to make my way back up, but it just dropped the package. You can see, package is one of five, so that counted. I do need to pick up this extinguisher. Prompts are weird sometimes. And then drop it here again. That's the wrong thing. I wanted to carry that one. Alright, so hold it in place for a bit so it topples over consistently like that. Now here's extinguisher strat number one. Line up, a little bit, and then a lot, to blow it onto the conveyor belt. Okay, line up this. Now here's a strat that doesn't make make sense in a physical sense. And I failed it. You can make it topple over. Um, let's see, backup strats. So very unfortunate, because we have to do a very slow backup strat now. There's a... Cr there's a... Yeah, we can get a forklift here. Alright, get these boxes out of the way so I can actually get in the forklift. There 
There we go. Okay, get on here. Place it very carefully so it doesn't so the forklift doesn't get stuck on collision. Then, yeah, just break through it like break through it by revving like that. Raise it. Get the pallet. And then lower it down. Now we finally have the package here. And we can get downstairs. Well, you can just fall down like that. Yeah. I, I feel like some safety rails would go a long way, honestly. Exactly. When there's a big drop, your character kind of hesitates to get on. So now, now I need to make my way out. Yeah, now we're gonna pick up this forklift. Very important. It's very important to not move while it's going up because the cone's gonna fall off. And then just push it. Push the final package in. So we're not doing a lobby exit here because in this floor it's not fast. So it's not fast on every floor, just certain ones. Because you do get control back after you leave here. When you beat the final of the three levels to unlock the bonus, then you're stuck. But uh, yeah, after beating the bonus level... Now, I've walked in a certain way there. If you walk too close to the other stage, 301, the 301 door opens. And then you have to wait for the 301 door to close and then 302 to open, which is a, uh, a silly time loss to get. But you do have to walk around the pillow, so you're kind of close to the game thinking you want to go for 301. Now, here's more worker gathering. And more carefully worked out strategies to get people, he get people there. Right. I'm going to unplug this. Make him notice that, that it's missing, and then he'll clean it and uh, and get there. Right. He's trying to warm himself up. We're gonna mess with him and put out all the heat sources. And now we're gonna use the hose to break all the electronics here. In, a, in actually a very specific order. And then break this one last. Is there a reason the order is so specific? Uh, you can soft lock the stage if you do it in the wrong order, because he will just not do things. Also, I could have plugged in the projector myself to speed up time, but there's a good chance that that electronics guy will unplug it because he really wants to plug it in himself. So as a safe strat, I just unplug it and let him plug it in himself. Now we're going to go 301. Yeah, you may have seen the theme that there's a lot of thinking outside the box strategies. Or as some people would say, big brain strats. And that's one thing I love about this game. That this game allows for so many different ways to solve the puzzle. No solution is better than any other. Any solution that gets you the objective is equally valid. The only reason we do the ones we do in the speedrun is because they're fast. Well, that's a lot of flowers you need to make bloom. Yeah, but it's it's not as bad as you think, having to water 246. I also have I also have visual cues for certain numbers I should be at. Uh, okay, I can scoop up No not that bucket. I want a bucket with water. Water that one, and then water this one. Take goodbye the bucket, say hello to hose. And then that one. Then do this area. That one, then plug it in here, that will water the rest of them. 44, I missed one, I'm supposed to have 45. It's on your right. Oh yeah, this one, I, I missed this one often. Thank you. Oh, I'm trying to go through the water. Plug this in here. Water this area here, water these two. And yeah, that, that entire flower bed done. Walk through the flowers like it's nobody's business. Then plug this in here. That's gonna water a bunch of the things. Rotate this statue to water these. 
I told you there would be big, big, big brain strats in this. And now the next number I'm looking for before going upstairs is 130, 138. So yeah, there's 138. Very, very carefully, that little lake, you have to water it until the lilies appear, otherwise it doesn't count as making flower bloom. Now the physics sometimes work against you, but there we go, there's 138. Now we go up. Now can I get lucky here? Pick up this bucket. No, didn't get lucky. You can water that the yeah that flower pot the guy, that guy is holding. Also, just for memes, I'm just gonna switch hats because that's a thing you can do in this game. So now I'm actually a firefighter. All right, water this guy's thing. What are these? 162. That's good because this will be 163. I said this will be 163. And yeah, this is the main reason I said 246 was not as bad as it looks. If you play this game, watch this. That's everything. Oh wow, that was a really cool strategy to get all of the last ones. Yeah, breaking the statue makes like all the water uh, spit up and it, it literally waters every single hedge in that area. It's one of my favorite strats in the game. Oh, speaking of favorite strats. This stage is really hard to do fast, but it's got a lot of fun things to it. Who, uh, who wants to go swimming? Well, I don't know. If, I don't know if Podmeister for Mark is here, but... Oh yeah, this is his stage. So our objective is to gather the pool toys here. There's 30 of them. Again, brick brain strats to make 30 seem less than it is. Yeah, we have three toys here to grab. Sometimes that can happen where it doesn't give you the place prompt and then it just puts the object down on top of the on top of the cart. Very important strat here, don't get pool rings into the pool. The more rings there the more objects there are in this little stream down here, the more problematic it is. is right, walk that, off here. Did that just start clogging things up? Or uh, why is well, that a problem? I don't want to spoil it, but I am going to spoil it. We're going to cause a traffic jam. So yeah, this is one of my favorite strats. This is an Nintendo mechanic of the game. You can lasso with lifesavers. So we've gone from firefighter to cowboy. Truly, we're an all-purpose employee here. If I get well, this right... Quick promotions. If I get this right, I get all four. Unfortunately, didn't get all four, but... Okay, yeah, now it's bad. You want to generally get that in two swings. I need a three. So this is a strat that really has not worked out for me. But because I'm dumb, I'm going to try it anyway. Pick up this mattress. Again, this is going to seem really dumb. Put it down. Walk into it a little to push it so it falls over like that. And then walk on top of it. You see that ball in the corner? If I do this right, we can lasso it. There we go! Nice! That's something to get excited about. Oh, 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 there, okay, there's a couple pool rings in there now. Shouldn't be too problematic. I'm gonna push this into the water, the speaker. Because if that ca gets caught on this pool divider, then the game lags insanely. Not to plug my channel, but there's a clip on my channel that shows how insanely the game can lag if that gets caught and starts uh, spazzing out. So there's a roll prompt here, but it's it doesn't work very well. It's easier to just walk into it. And yeah, now we can just walk in here. So walking along that flower bed and then grabbing the grabbing the ball that way. That's what you would do if you failed the strat. I went the long way around, sort of. I could have gone the, the other way around. And now there's a traffic jam here. Well, the, there's a lasso here. They can just scoop up items here for us. I imagine this is why you didn't want to put those rings in then, because it would just make it harder to get all the green stuff? Well, it will mostly make it harder to get the big items, because you can't lasso them, so I have to push the, put the cart close to them to make it count. But I might be able to make it work by approaching from this side. 
He, this is what I mean. The, the big green ball doesn't want to go in. Ah, I see. Yeah. Break the... Well, I can do it that way, though, as a backup. Break the vase in the process for good measure. I mean, who puts a $10,000 vase there anyway? That seems like a big mistake. Oh, there's, the there's another one. You can see it in screen. Uh, you can see it on the screen right there. Right, right. My point still stands, honestly. It, it does, it really does. Well, yeah, so, the sto there, so there is a bit of a story to this game. I skipped over it because you skipped the intro cutscene, but it's... It's either your dad or your uncle. I forget which because I haven't gone into the story since we, since I started speedrunning this. But you get hired at the company and yeah, you start at floor one and then work your way up by doing a good job. And yeah, we're going to be working our way all the way up to becoming a CEO. That's basically our uh, thing. Now I'm going to go save here. There's a fast track you can do by watering these, uh... Yeah, that didn't work. Okay, I'm gonna have to do the not save strat. So, stand on top of them and then, yeah, the game lets you, uh, lets you on them. Okay, I need to be careful because I need to water this corner here. And I need to be careful not to fall off. I need to get rid of this so I don't get a prompt for it. Uh, okay, things are going wrong already. Great. While you do this, mind if I plug a few things? Yeah, I'm just trying to get this... This is what you're intended to do, but it doesn't work very well. Alright, then uh, we would like to remind you that aside from BSG events and their own marathons, ESA hosts many other events across Europe, including the British UKSG, Hackathon and more. So be sure to drop a follow to see whenever something is live. If you want to stay updated with our events, you can do so by following us on Twitter and Instagram under the handle BSG Marathon. Get a behind the scenes look of the event and stay up to date with the latest news on our marathons, events and more. We're also in the process of uploading our VODs to our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash BSG Marathon. So be sure to check it out and subscribe to find one new video per day in your feed. All right, so yeah, there's a stream here that pushes, pushes the boulders, but not you. Uh, yeah, and I, what I did that was a little strat of letting the boulder push me. There's also the thing about these is you need to be in a pushing motion to roll these boulders. You lose connection if you, if you do what the game considers a pulling action. Now we're gonna disturb the piece here. I didn't want to, but look, this guy has a boulder that I need. If he just let me have it peacefully, I would have left them alone. Right, break more things on our way to victory. Now the big boulder goes in just like that. Unfortunately, during this rolling, they tend to roll too fast and go over the... over the thing. That one word because I let go early. But yeah, this is kind of hard to line up, but there's a thing you can do. Uh, where you can... It's not very fast, but it works pretty consistently. is by pushing these by walking into them, like we did earlier with the pool and the big ball. It's just that it doesn't work very well. Let me get this gong out of the way. It's bothering me. Okay, I need this to get out of the way as well. Okay, good. And now it's finding where's the boulder, where did boulder number five go? Oh, I can see it very faintly, it's here. There we go, there's the roll prompt. Okay, so it's here. Roll it a little bit. Okay, it's going over there now. Yeah, this is, uh, Zen Garden is very, can be very mean to you, like this. Push it in, and there we go.
Alright, I wasn't gonna address chat until now, but... I'm seeing what Dark Coco mentioned in chat. And I have to address this, because... There's a recent uh, Katamari Damacy remake. Well, recent, I think it's maybe a few years old, but there's a Ka Katamari Damacy, uh, Damacy remake. If you're a Katamari fan, you may know of it. That was developed by the developers of this game, Paladin Studios. Which I might add are uh, based in the Netherlands, which would be perfect, because BSG is a Dutch organization. You know, it all works out well like that. Was the, did I see it right that this level was called God Testing? Uh, no. Oh. I must have seen that wrong. I like I thought it. thought it was something along the, uh, those no, lines. No, I don't blame you, because the level, the actual level is called Goo Testing. Ah. Okay. So, deliver a big cube. Fun. So, how do we get a big cube? Well, you may notice it, it's absorbing pink, uh, any pink liquids around, including in when it's in vials, and... Yeah, every time it grows in size, uh, I drop it, so I have to re-grab it, and at this point, I'm dragging it, and I can't, like, hold it anymore. I'm gonna clean up all this goo. And I'm actually gonna set up for a launch here, but these boxes tend to really get in the way, so I'm actually gonna move them out of the way first. And yeah, that should work. Uh, because you see the big tank over there. Yeah, it's exploded. You may remember the, the flower garden thing where we pulled over a statue and it watered everything. Yeah, it just so happens to spill into this pool infinitely and then let's just grow the cube to the size that we need. When you play this casually, there's these uh, scales around that measure the size of your cube and if it's green, then that's your visual cube for knowing it's big enough to be delivered. And yeah, more very questionable physics here. If I pull this right, sometimes I need to let go and try again. We can squeeze it to this clearly not large enough gap. Like well, so. It's just goo, so you'd, you'd expect it wouldn't be that difficult. But then again, it seems to be quite difficult. I mean, we have an even more difficult part like in, which is fitting in the queue so the stage will accept it. There we go. Does the game run at 30 or 60 FPS? Uh, I believe 60. You might be seeing 30 because because uh, of my hardware specs, I'm kind of forced to stream at 30 FPS. But I'm pretty sure the game itself runs at 60. Yeah, I mentioned before that this many different ways to solve puzzles and I'm just only showing one of them so yeah feel free to try this game out it's uh, it's on switch it's available on the switch no other platforms though it is a switch exclusive but yeah it's also still pretty new it came out this year uh, March of this year to be to be precise and yeah I'm as impressed as you are about the, 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 some of the insane strategies that there exist, that have been developed within a year. Uh, specifically, I guess I'll do like some random shoutouts in the middle of the run. Uh, specifically shoutouts to a bunch of the Japanese runners of this game. Himei and uh, Yukihane. Uh, Yukihane being the world record for this. A world record holder for this, who is absolutely insane. I don't know off the top of my head how much it is. But yeah, anyway, video games. So yeah, this stage is I'm just connecting tubes. And turning on valves to make the, the warm water go. You can also walk through tubes in the, in the middle part. Turn on this valve. And we're going to use this tube next. Turn this valve on as well. Can I get a hold prompt, please? Thank you. Yeah. This game is extremely fun. It might be a little frustrating when things go wrong when you're speedrunning. But, you know, casually you don't have that, that time crunch. So, you're free to do what you want. 
And that's all the rooms heated up. So yeah, that's it. Like, there's a lot of tubes and everything, and a lot of tubes we didn't use as well, so... That stage has a wide variety of ways. Now... I'm gonna try to stay positive. No promises, because this is one of my least favorite stages in the game. You might be familiar with the with a, a, a just a, a small little indie game called Super Mario Sunshine. Yes, I'm gonna be that coy about it. Anyway, uh, there's a certain memorable mission which has you scrubbing a beach. That's what we're doing here, but worse. If you thought oh, yeah, Japanese Serena Beach episode six was strict, you've seen nothing yet. Also, new mechanic, cleaner. If you clean in place for a while, it goes crazy. And you can just zoom. Turn this up so it stops uh, leaking goo. So yeah, first we created goo with the cube, and now we're cleaning it up. So little specks like these footsteps are enough to not give you the 100%. The funny thing with the cleanup in the Super Mario Sunshine run uh, is that in the... Uh, Japanese version, that's kind of a similar thing where even just the tiniest bit of goop won't give you, uh, won't mean, will mean it doesn't count. Whereas they change that in the English version. Because yeah, because like, in, uh, in JP, some of the goop is also invisible. Yeah. You need to clean like 99% of it and some of the goop is invisible. Whereas in, uh, in the Western versions, all of the goop is visible and the requirement is less. But, uh, this game, uh, at least there's no invisible goo in this in this stage, but they still want you to clean 100% of it. And yeah, we're, we're in a speed run right now, so I don't have time to move it out of the way so I can see what I'm doing here, so I have to just have to clean very thoroughly. There's just it's a tiny bit of goop in the thing left there, in the corner. Or in the, like, halfway between the wall. Yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll scoop out this area more. If you see sparkles, then the area is generally cleaned up. Ah, okay. Yeah, you can see the sparkles here. See another That's like cool tiny little way. speck here. But yeah, we yeah. have a, a reasonably specific order, uh, routing order. That's kind so of I'm going to willingly enough. tip this over because it's going to be way too much of a headache to try and avoid doing so. Just tip it over voluntarily and then clean up the goo. Also, these boxes are the worst. Often I get what we call 1%ed, which is when you, like, clear the stage, but the game says 99%. Oftentimes there's a little speck of goo underneath those cardboard boxes I miss. Now, you might also be noticing blue stuff on the floor. That's water. And that doesn't count, so it's actually helpful to knock over some water. There's a guy on my cleaner. It's actually helpful to get some water to spill, because it helps clean up the goo. And there's no... Whenever you spill any goo, no goo can spawn uh, on water. Water takes priority. Yeah, now we're going to clean up this area that you start in. Clean up this specs on the side of the wall. Yeah, when when uh, when there's a liquid on the very edge, it will the the liquid, so to speak, will color in the uh, the sides of the level here as well. So generally the percentage I'm looking for here is 91% before moving on to the final area. Uh, okay. The objects can also can get stuck on the goo, it's very sticky goo. And yeah, there's a little visual thing to show that it's being stuck by goo, but it doesn't actually count towards the, the goo mess that's here. And then we save this area for last because of a very specific reason. Because there's this machine that's producing goo, which uh, doesn't help us towards our goal. But if we can get this water to spawn and slightly adjust this so it starts cleaning... Uh, so it starts spilling goo onto the water. I want this little speck on. Couldn't you just take out the power? Uh, no, because this guy that's around here is gonna... He's gonna try to reconnect it. He really wants that machine to be running. Okay. Another safe strategy you can do is take the machine far away from him, and he'll start uh, connecting a different machine that doesn't spill goo, but that loses time. And I didn't get 1%ed, so... 
Nice. Now floor 4. Now this is the one where we'll be doing a lobby exit. Because as you can see the level's quite far away from the elevator. Oh that's a neat... Uh, that's a neat little fact skip. I actually didn't know that the Nintendo assisted. Maybe that's why it doesn't, maybe that's why it's a Switch exclusive. I don't know. What I do know is that we have to connect water to the biome. Now the intended way is for you to build a gigantic maze of uh, of these these pipes and guide water through them. But we're going to be doing something a little bit different. That's a teeny tiny bit faster. Get this uh, goo producing tube. No goo cleaning required anymore, so don't have to worry about that. Disconnect this. Uh, okay, yeah, you may have seen me g go crazy with the cleaner a little bit. Yeah, we're just gonna break these glass cases. That was pretty fast, nice. And now we're just gonna use this to water them. Hope and pray. Just kind of wiggle around and hope you get it. And then drop it and it'll get it. 44 seconds is pretty nice. Yeah, you can see the full stage, like, it's a pretty massive stage, but we do... And I forgot to do the lobby exit, nice. Get that in there. I tend to forget lobby exits, I'm used to it from, from stage one. Because we used to do it everywhere, but then later we tested it. And we, uh, we found that it was only faster for certain floors. Now we're in floor five marketing. Starting with the mail room. So yeah, each floor has its own, like, aspect of a business to it. So yeah, left floor 4, uh... Yeah, you, you will have seen the text pop up. Like, floor 4 was research, and now we're in floor 5 marketing. Deliver the packages. Now, it's been a while since we've done any catapult launches, but don't worry, I got you covered, because they're going to be returning. So first, get that green package into place. Uh, don't forget the plug. And then, yeah, deliver the orange package first. Then here we can bring the, the green package in. Be a little bit careful with it, because the package needs to be a certain distance within the uh, the person. Alright, that's fine. I didn't get what I want. I want to break open that room in the far left corner. But uh, the, the package is in the position that I can just try again. Okay, so deliver this. All right, so let's angle it a bit more so it actually opens up the area where the yellow guy is, so I can deliver his package. Not quite the not quite the spot I wanted to open. That should work still. Uh, sir, your package. Yeah, it was unfortunate that I had to do so many launches. That's a backup strategy, but that backup strategy is for the, the purple package, not the yellow. How would you deliver that package without... Don't ask me, I don't run damageless. <laughs> but there actually is a way to... Deliver it damage. Oh, every, then? every stage is possible damageless. Huh. That's people it's that have done full game damageless play. runs. They're crazy. Shout out to CMFP. Yeah, because those doors just seem way too small for the package to fit through. Yeah, there's definitely like alternate routes. Okay, so like the flowers, uh, I have visual cues in how many people I should have at every point in the stage. I'm trying to push that out of the way. 8 out of 30, that's perfect. Very fast as well. And after this section, we should have 19. Okay, fortunately I could still grab it, even though I dropped it. There's the 19. 
Now we're going to do a bit of setup for the rest of the stage. There's a catapult launch you can do here, but it's very fast and I haven't... Or it's uh, pretty hard and I haven't practiced it. So put two Wi-Fi extenders here. Oh, that's not where I want that. There we go. Now before I grab the last one, because I'm leaving out, leaving with that one, plug in the actual, uh, the actual Wi-Fi thing. Now you can see to where it extends, so I'm going to put this one on the floor. And I pick up the far one so the, the signal stays. Put that up here. Also shout out to this cute kitty, bo uh, kitty on the clipboard. I need the door to open. Do I need to pl place this close enough to the door so the door stays open? There we go. And now I'm just gonna hold it until it says 30. It said 30 for a moment, so I got it. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for your uh, your need good job facts in uh, in chat. I appreciate it. Look at me, I'm showcasing this in the BSG and I'm still learning. Oh, This is a station that can also be kind of aggravating in speedruns. Because things outside of your control can mess you up. We have to arrange the objects by color, as per usual. Uh, but yeah, once you've arranged it, like so, uh, the guy's gonna sit on it. This guy is going to sit on the chair, and sometimes that makes the chair roll out of the area. Fortunately, that's not a problem for the green area. Because the green areas just deliver some books, and the purple area as well. The purple area is just really big. Oh yeah, there's a fair amount of routing for this. For this day. So then we go in here, and we're going to do another launch here. So, I'm probably going to need more than one here. Hmm. Well, I was right. I did need more than one. By that, I meant actually meant to. I basically need to break open a space big enough for the... Uh... Oh, God, I glitched it. So that's on the wrong side now. So I need to keep using this. Okay, you... You need to move. Oh, boy. Fine, that will work too. Damn it took so many tries. Oh. Uh, I'd like to get out of here. Yeah, you don't actually have to move the divider. You can do it without it, but it's very obnoxious to do. So I just don't bother with it. Then we get this book in. Yeah, that's like... Yeah, this routing was also not done by me. I'll, I will just say that. Alright, let me put it a little bit better in. Because there's going to be more purple objects that need to go in there. You can see one of them in the room like, right there in the middle. Alright. Let me put this in a spot so hopefully it doesn't disconnect. Um, I'm going the wrong way, routing-wise. Oh, he's sitting in there. Still says 3 out of 5. Get this out of the way. Get the hold prompt, and now drag this table. Oh, right. Kind of forgot to unplug that. Alright, we're almost done with purple now. We need to get this chair in. Hopefully I can swing it in. And the last one is this purple board. It's now a white board. Well, it's not a whiteboard anyway, it's a bulletin board. But I once called it a whiteboard and then said it was a purple board. So it's a purple board now. Four out of five. And then the last thing we need is this book in here. That was being obscured by the purple board. There we go, stage done. Now there's two... Now, I pressed B to let go of the item and let physics take care of the of the distance. Like doing a, a slight little yeet on it. So that's what B does. A does uh, places it on the floor. 
And yeah, B, let's go and, you know, continues physics and momentum and all that. So I hope I remember to do the lobby exit this time, because this is another floor where lobby exit is faster. Okay. So this is one of the things I, I meant when I said things can go very wrong with the slightest misplacements or mistakes. This this printer, or I think it's a fax machine. But yeah, we're going to be doing launches with these things that are on rails. Nice, that worked perfectly. So it broke through the glass, so now I can take this battery with me. Or parts. It's, uh, it's parts. Hold this. And just do this. I would have to drag it all the way around. Oh, very careful. Don't fall down first and leave the part up, up top. Because you'd have to walk all the way back around to get it again. Also, there's different going to be differently sized pieces. So, it's kind of like a jigsaw puzzle. I want to get this out of the way now, though. Because there's a part here. Very sneakily hidden. And yeah, th this part will only fit over the uh, the part that's, all that's now already placed. I need to change it a little bit. Okay. Good. Now push it. Yeah. Luckily, it will connect if it's roughly in the right place. So that door right there on my left, this door, that's what I ne would have needed to take the uh, the first parts through if I didn't get that strategy. So you can imagine how much time it saves to do that, especially if you get a first try. And this, just touch it and go. <laughs> it also perfectly breaks open a space. It's uh, weirdly consistent. It's like one of the few consistent things. Now for safety, I'm going to unplug this and get this out of the way. I need to drag this part over. Uh, I'm gonna turn it a little bit because I want to get drag it on this side, so yeah, the, the the plug doesn't get caught on corners. A lot of the going fast in this game is also preventing the game from making things go wrong for you. See, so, yeah, this is a very long piece. I don't want this blocking off other slots, so that goes in that spot. So now we've got two pieces left. The first one is in here, and we're going to launch this through the wall. Uh, place it right there. Get this connected. And bang. Nice, it went fully through. It can get stuck behind this like thing that hangs on the wall. Oh, need to move it a little bit because I need to move this table a slight bit. So I can push this and the table doesn't block. The table doesn't get doesn't get blocked by the longer table. Move that out of the way. Position this. Now I want some good good luck vibes in chat because I can soft lock the stage here if the part gets shot into a place I can't grab it. Alright, no soft lock. Although that is a very funky antenna. You could hear the collision going. Alright, cool. Didn't soft lock 504. And hey, guess what? I remember to do lobby exit. While we're uh, heading on to the elevator to the next stage, I'd quickly remind, uh, like to remind everybody that you are currently watching the Benelux Speedrunner Gathering, organized by monthly gatherings in the Benelux for speedrunners. Due to the situation surrounding COVID-19, we're currently doing our events online for the time being. This event features streamers from both Benelux and the rest of the world bringing you entertainment during the lockdown. And we're currently raising money for MIND, which is a nationwide organization committed to prevent mental health issues and to support everyone who has dealt with mental health issues themselves or within their family. In every region in the world, mental health disorders 
surpass 10% of the population. Government seems to lack the momentum in reducing the burden of mental health problems, as only 55% have mental health awareness and only 8% uh, have suicide prevention plans. Organizations like MIND help raise awareness to the issue, helping us to get one step closer to a world where everyone can, can get the help they need. All of your donations will be going to MIND, so be sure to get your donations in for a fantastic charity. Okay, so what I did there was a little bit of optimization in that I started revving the uh, the forklift as I was turning around to where I needed to go. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. Dang it. That didn't topple over the correct way. Oh, God. Ice physics, why? All right, that's fine. All right, leave that for later. Get that out of the way. All right, get this down. Oh, please don't get stuck on the stairs. Flip it back over. Make, make sure to close it. Because that's going to cause issues otherwise. But drag it through here so I can pick that up with the forklift later. Now, you might have seen me do launches, but there's another thing you can do with the cables. Which is, wrap it around and drag these objects. Alright, so once I get once I get it dragged to this part, then I start uh, moving it around. Want a little bit of, uh, want a little bit of space here. Okay. I'm not sure how if I'll be able to wrap around everything here. I think I can. Oh no, it just glitches through. Good. All right, do the steel fashioned way, I guess. There we go. Second time it worked. Alright, nine out of twenty nine out of twenty-two, that's fine. Now back here. And pick up this one. Rev it up again to like get a a little bit of a starting boost. Drive a bit Can carefully here and then drop it. Can I do a quick donation? Uh yeah sure, while I try to break this wall. Okay, uh, we just got a 5 euro donation from Warwick STL saying, Good job on playing, good job, Double Double. Here's to the best RNG and the greatest of jobs being done good. Thank you very much for your donation. Yeah, thanks Warwick. Warwick's a good boy. Alright, so yeah, here we connect the cable and just launch it. Oh wow, nice. That's too good. Alright, so number one just went down, so one of the packages went out of the area, but that usually happens, so don't worry about it. I can sort that out later. Like, routing routing accounts for that. Now we put this in. So, you know how I mentioned that objects hovering over their designated area will make them count? So, I can just put this in place and just leave. I don't have to lower it. But yeah, they, they get, like, kind of pushed out of the area. And the other two is... So the other two don't count, it's these two, because they're not... They're in the green zone and not in the purple, or in the pink. So just push them into the pink and you're good. Alright, so we're going from 601 to 603, Depot. Funnily enough, there's... Uh... There's nine floors in the game, although floor nine is one single level, the uh, the final level of the game. And so of the first eight floors, there's only one floor where we do the levels in order one, two, three. All right, more clever use of game mechanics coming up. So I'm doing this for marathon safety. Get this box out of the way. I'd say marathon safety, but I do that in full game runs even. 
I haven't done it in the IL attempts. I was ready for that. I was ready for it twice over. Yeah. Alright. So, while it goes up, hold the direction I want it to go. It'll break the wall very consistently. Although, for some reason, the package fell out. That's not supposed to happen. That's actually never happened before. Actually, it hasn't. <laughs> luckily, it's just... Luckily, it's not too much of a walk around. Normally, that package is supposed to stay on it. And by not... Uh, not detaching... The... Uh, yeah, not detaching it, you can just walk on it perfectly fine. Okay, it didn't even break the... Uh, break the wall properly. I'll have to do this again. Uh, alright. Plan B, we're gonna detach it. Because we need to do it anyway, because we're gonna be using the crane more later. Alright, so here's the clever use of game mechanics I talk around. It's huge physics. Swing it around like so, and bang! Wall gone. Push it out of the way so it doesn't get in my way as I drag this. So I stacked up the packages like that very specifically so I can drag this on and have it count. Because it's partly on the zone. Alright, so now we're moving on to 602. Between this and 401, I kind of flip-flop between them, on which is my least favorite stage. And it's again because just a lot can go wrong very easily by things outside of your control. So we can trust these guys to get those packages onto the conveyor belt. And yeah, what we're going to start doing here is push this. So these guys start helping with the packages and push those two on the, onto the conveyor belt just like that. Now this guy in particular, he just tries his best. He's just not very good at helping. Putting these on the, on the conveyor belt in such a way that they won't get stuck like that. Okay, that should go. Hold this one. Okay, that went through. Yeah, this is just safe strats to make sure nothing goes majorly wrong. Then before I pick up this big package, I'm going to push this. But these guys start grabbing these packages. And also start... Get this in here, he plugs it in, opens, and then they start helping with the packages here. Oh. Yeah, sometimes you can pick up that package. Okay. Yeah, before I move on, make sure that this goes properly. Not quite what I had in mind. There we go. Put that on there for good measure. Alright, now get, I'm gonna get out of there. And yeah, this is the next area where we go. Now, very important. Pick up this object. Not the one on the right. And don't fall down. Good. If you leave that one and use this machine, then the cable won't reach. Where I'm about to plug it in. A little bit of time optimization. Do that in the meantime. Leave these uh, packages in the path of this of this these movable stairs. All right, line it up. Make him grab the packages. And yeah, I do need to wait for him to grab the packages. 
Luckily, I can give them to people over uh, through the window like that. And if you if you time it really well, I'm gonna try to do it. But there's people in in my way. You can pass it through the wall. All right, then push him here. Those are the last two packages up there. This honestly seems like a really fun stage, at least casually, I imagine. Yeah, casually. In a speedrun setting, it just is there's just too many factors that go, can go wrong. Yeah, I can imagine. Run. This looks like one of those levels that's great for casual play, but really bad for speedrunning. Really is. Just like 401, where in a casual setting, you can just take your time to find what spots you've missed. I can also take your time in like setting up so there's like no goo spawning from from goo containers that fall over and stuff like that. See, I'm just helping empty this area. And then the last package, put that on the conveyor belt. Yeah, for safety's sake, I'm just gonna let put everything on the conveyor belt and let let it take care of it. And before I go down, check. Uh, scope the entire area. Okay, nothing there. This stage could really benefit from a zoom op uh, if you could zoom the camera out and in. Oh yeah, this is also a thing. You can't cause a traffic jam like this. Okay. I'm gonna take the gamble here. Yeah, that's a little, so I can speed up a little bit by carrying a package and then walking into and just push them in. Uh, but if a guy gets in my way... Okay, good. Crisis averted. Didn't miss one. 424 is alright, I'll take that. <laughs> it's pretty long stage as well. Right, that's all floor six uh, base levels done. Now promotion level six oh four, which also has uh, this is warehouse cargo inspection. More stuff that can go wrong very easily. It's fun. So we need to guide the inspectors to their designated uh, spot they need to go to. So first, I only need to push that a little bit. Ice physics will once again, for once, work in my favor and push it uh, to where it needs to be. Okay. However, ice physics are going to be very unhelpful in this air in this section. So push this out of the way. So. I have a clear path to drag these boxes over. All right. It doesn't have to be mega precise, but when it's like this, the uh, the, the the third is not gonna, really going to fit through. So I want to line it up like that, then push this, or pull it, pull it first, and then push it later because I want to stay on this side of it. Okay, cool. That's good enough for him. I want to grab the uh, fire extinguisher here and use it on these boxes to push this guy off because that because he needs to go that way all right I'm just gonna play safe here and get rid of this and get this out of the way because I'm setting up for a launch here Okay, it's, it's more in the way than I thought it was. I'm picking up every object except the one I want to pick up. I'm going to pick up this one and get it out of the way more. That's the glass I want to break all the way over there. Because that's going to create an easy path for the purple inspector to go there. Alright, forklift time. Are we going to get the funny collision here? No. It can really bounce up. Like the height of two forklifts. Alright. Oh. Alright, now he can walk over. And then we back out. He's in the spot. 
this uh, this box is uh, being a problem. All right. Oh no. Container, please. All right. So place it down. Rev up and push. There we go. Go underneath. The intended way is to put it on, on top of the thing and then roll around, turn around. Now, that's the last I need this, so I can leave it. I did check if, if orange guy made his way over here. No, he didn't, so he's still stuck there. So what I need to do is wait for purple to go over and then open this up. And then orange guy... Purple should make it to uh, his destination just fine now. Because I got the launch and broke the glass. Yeah, there we go. Three out of three. That's also a reason I stood where I stood at the end. Because uh, the guys stop moving once they reach their destination. But physics uh, still happens. So the ice can make him slide out of position and make him not count anymore. So I just stand and block him off to uh, prevent that. Alright, floor seven. This is where runs come to die. Coming off with 701. So yeah, this is the floor I mentioned before where we, where, uh, with overworld routing and everything, uh, we actually do them in order 1, 2, 3. Is this the only floor where you do them in order? Uh, yeah, this is the only floor, uh, floor where we do them 1, 2, 3. All right, so definitely going to be playing uh, playing somewhat safe here. The first of which is picking up this this part, so that machine stops doing things. Then put this battery. If it lets me run in, put that battery in. Pick up this. Stand in the spot. Let it go haywire. Break the glass. I need to break more of the glass. Okay, cool. It made it out. That's what I want. Because, yeah, because, yeah, they want you to put, like, all the parts so the robots get assembled, but you actually only need, uh, only need one to assemble one. There's two pre-made robots you can get here. That's one of them. We're going to now go to the other. Because that was a little slow, this is actually this, the second fastest cycle I'm on right now for this, because I need to wait for him to turn around, face that way, and then push him. Go through here, pick up the, uh, the final part we need. Oh, I went the wrong way. Whoops. We go out this way. Uh, I need this part. Okay, so... So, place this here. Uh, place this part next to it. Now hold this part. And I hope that works. Yeah, okay. It's very specific in the order you need to have them assemble parts. So I need to find a little bit of a... A little bit of a save here. With this robot, because he's kind of gotten stuck. And nice, there we go. He's locked on to. Uh... Yeah, he's locked on to the to to the place. Nice. Okay, we survived 701. 214 is fine. All right, now 702. Laser lab. Oh, yeah, boy. All right, there's actually not too much to this stage. This is just like clever, clever ways to solve the puzzles. 
This is like the most closest to casual uh, speedrun stage you'll see. Just manipulate the mirrors. Come on. There we go. Uh, yeah, that should be fine. I needed to hit the right side of that. Because I'm going to reflect the laser later. Now, don't point this at the actual uh, thing. But point it like so. Like so and then drag this mirror. To actually light everything up. Like, like so. Now, here I have a visual cue. I need to hit that pillar. Yeah, that's good enough. And we take this in this way. So it's just like this. And then we're going to drag on this side to turn it and light up the rest of these. Oh, come on. Come on, you can do it. There it is. I'll put this mirror here. If I've lined it up right. Oh. Okay, it's not quite what we wanted. There we go, fixed it. Alright, for this one, move the laser a little bit so it points that way. And just move the mirror. Come on. Okay. Oh, I had it there. There we go. Alright, so... This one. I'll go this one first. This one's pretty simple. Point, point both of them at this. See, there's also, like, clever use of props that are in the stage. Uh, in this stage, mainly the mirrors. And there's another one of, of those right here. Oh, almost perfect. You can use the table to, like, rotate the mirror as you're dragging it. And there we go. Here we are already, uh, already at the final area here. There we go. Use those reflective cases to uh, spread the laser out. Uh, have this rebound back in. Like so. Close this screen because it's also a mirror. And lastly. Get that out of the way. And. Oh. Maybe. And there we go. Alright. That's 702 done. All lasers. Yeah, floor seven robotics. Now you've gone through those two stages just fine. Seven hundred two is pretty fine. That's not really what makes this uh, 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 makes this floor a run killer. It's seven hundred one and seven hundred three that do. Because uh, we have some robots here, and yeah, we have to dock the mini bots. Now you might notice they seem to be following along this red trail. And there's things with red paint around. So what we're going to be doing here is use this paint to redirect the robots. But yeah, these robots is, are just... They're not very smart. So we kind of have to babysit them. Alright, so let me cut out the path for him. And then while he's going, I'm gonna like paint this uh, this part real quick. I'm gonna check back on him now. All right.
Mm. But this is the tricky part. Okay, he pushed it correctly out of the way. Okay. That should be fine. Alright. Mini bot number three. I just missed the cycle, which means I just have more time to set it up. And let me very carefully get these out of the way. Because if these break, then it, it spills water. Like so. And yeah, you can't paint on water. And the robots get confused. Please follow me, sir. Okay, you want to go there? That's fine. Please roll around this way, sir. Alright, now hope that, that doesn't cause an issue. And go for this final boy. Right here. Again, enough time to set up stuff. Alright, I'm just hoping to... Oh, no. That did not go well. Yeah, they're, uh... Yeah, when there's a lot of paint around, they tend to like, not take the, the pass you want them to take. This robot definitely seems to be a pain to get to its spot. Yeah, it just... stuff goes wrong way too easily. Okay, go, go this way. And then, like so. See, look at this. Yeah, this is one of the stages uh, which makes my estimate very not safe. I'm just gonna... See, that's the one thing you don't want him to do. Oh, wow, now at this point he's just trolling you. Exactly. Oh, yeah, now he's gonna take this path. So, I'm just gonna try to guide him back around this way. Right, now let's hope that red line. I'm just going to stand here, like, you can't go this way. You go that way. Oh, jeez, that took forever. I'm going to leave the paint thing behind. I don't know where I left the cleaner. So I'm, I have the, some cleanup to do, because, yeah, he's stuck yeah, on, the, the, uh, the, on the mud. Yeah, I think the robot was stuck, uh, or got stuck on the cleaner at some point. Alright, well, I'll use the way, way less convenient mop. game is just really mean to you sometimes. Okay. Alright, be a buddy and come this way. Ah, uh, he missed the he missed the queue. Okay, let's hope this let's pray that works. Get this piece of collision out of the way. I can't pick up because it's broken. Also, stand here. There's a couple specks of goo, but he shouldn't get stuck. No, oh, okay, we're finally out. Five and a half minutes in. Ooh.
All right. Now, luckily, after uh, a, a stage down acro painting, we're gonna get a very simple. Yeah. We're gonna get a very simple stage. With a fun strategy to it as well. So what they want you to do is guide three robots, but you saw how much of a pain it was in the in the previous stage, so we're not gonna do that. What we're gonna do instead is uh crack this box. Okay, that didn't work this time. You can push that robot to go onto the left uh, thing. Right here. And he'll go on there. And that will be immensely helpful. Now there's a gas canister here. If we just heat it up like so, with the laser. He just starts going crazy and breaks the wall. Now we can go behind and just point the laser at the machine ourselves. Oh, don't get it caught on the wall. I'm trying to grab the middle one. It's not letting me. So, the, so this one in the very middle is already pointing at it. We need to point at the actual like cube-like structure here. Okay, that should be good. There we go, trigger it. Sometimes you get cut, cut off by the mirror, so it needs to... By the mirror blocking one of the lasers, directing it wrong. Alright, making our way back. Alright, floor 8. Now this is where the game gets a little bit different. You might have noticed there's three doors, not four. So there's one. So uh, yeah, this does not have a uh, a bonus stage. This is just 801, 802, and 803. We're gonna do them in order one, three, two. And this is one of the hardest strats in the game. You saw how much the game has been trolling me, but uh, it can be made up if I get this uh, this strat that I'm about to do. We call it aquarium strat. So if you click on the plug, then it automatically retracts. So plug that in. And get this printer here. Okay. So I need to launch it reasonably specifically. Through the wall like that. I move the... I move the desk a little bit, which actually is helpful. Because for some reason, this is a very special yellow desk. That is clearly not on the desk, but it counts. So as it turns out... As it turns out... Uh, the area here... It's not actually the desk, but it's the area the desk starts in. So if you move the desk out of the way, the area to where it accepts packages... Is, uh, is still there. Also, I need to unplug that for the strat I, uh, I mentioned. I do, need the I do need a yellow package here. Uh, and, yeah, moving the desk is helpful, that because that means you can stack yellow packages on top of each other. Okay, so, this is hard. It's exactly the size of the doorway, so... Ah, it's gonna keep falling off. Alright, I'll fix that later. Okay. Put that purple package there. Uh, place this package over here. There we go, that counts. The game gives it to you, the game gives it to you. Okay. Stand and hold. If you keep holding the stick and try to hold it, you're just going to walk up the stairs instead. But you can push it on the side where you step up. Yeah, well you guys, We can just bundle them together like this. Final yellow package. You don't actually need to pull the drawer open. I'm going to do it for safety. You can actually pick it up without opening the drawer. Drawer is open. Uh, just open enough. I'm going to see if this works. Nice. Now we're going to use this card here to transfer all these green packages over.
Carefully place it. And now very carefully, don't pick up the package. Very carefully. Because we don't want packages to fall off. I'm actually going to re-grab it. So I can fit it through the door properly. Because it also keeps momentum. So I don't, also don't want it to keep rolling once all the packages are in. Yeah, 13 out of 20 is what I want. See, that's what I mean. Like, it kept rolling. Luckily, I can just place this on the floor and we're good. Uh, so one thing I forgot to do is grab that printer I launched earlier. Luckily, the yellow package is still counted. Because that needs to go over here. So it's time for Aquarium Strat. The reason this strat is really hard is because you can't just launch it. You have to launch it at a specific speed. Like, that might be too fast. Because I need to get in there. Uh, move this desk out of the way. And pick up this package here. Ooh. Oh, come on. Where's the entrance here? Yeah, see, I failed it. Because I launched it too fast, I can't get on it. So the idea is to get on there and then drag the package over that way. So now I have to do ba the backup strap, which is going all the way around. Okay, this part of the table needs to move. And yeah, dragging this around is really long and not fun. Just wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Very big wiggles, and then we get it over. Just drag it all the way, and then walk around. And then, yeah, for consistency's sake, I'm just gonna drag it to here, where it should have been if I had actually gotten the, the, the strategy. Unplug that, because I don't want that in here. Drag it up here, leave it, then grab the other side, and there you go. Get that out of my way. Right. Push that, that desk out of the way. Oh, I need I need the plug. There we go. Because we're gonna break. Not the part I wanted to break. But uh, if since I need to get the printer anyway, put this in its designated spot. Go up against the wall. Also, before I try this launch again, I'm just going to drag this away. Get those packages down. Alright, that probably worked. Let me grab this package and test it. Well, it did launch, just not where I wanted it. Well, at least it's close. Yeah, you, yeah, it's fine. I can just push this, uh, push the desk in the, in, uh, in, its, in the spot. Whoops. Get up the stairs, please. Oh yeah, this strat is so we can just dump the package like that and don't have to go into the room and out every time. Now yeah, while you drag the purple packages there, I quickly wanted to mention that for the Dutch-speaking viewers among us, uh, starting on the 30th of November, Mind presents a week-long livestream themed around performance pressure. During the stream, they'll have experts answering questions, giving tips and advice about things like motivation, handling of stress, loneliness, and so on. Registration is free. Uh, if you are interested in this, check them out uh, with the link I will post in the chat in just a second. Okay, that toppled over. I was scared that it was going to topple all the way and make a package fall out. Oh. 
Okay, cool, it counts. We move. All right, now 803. This is a this is a uh, kind of a special stage for me personally because this is the only stage in the game for which I found a strat that's still used in the run today. Actual speedrun contributions. I'll uh, I'll go over it to toot my own horn. I'll go over it once we get there. But yeah, place the paintings. Two of them are already up. So we're going to take these yellow paintings and put them up here. And... It's going to push my way through. Okay, let's go around. There we go. The last thing you want to do is fall off there. That's not what I want to pick up. I'm going to pick up this. No, I don't want to pick that up. Game, stop it. So yeah, most of the paintings that need to go on the wall are near the actual area. Like these two long paintings are right here. Now, very specific here. I want to turn left. Because otherwise that happens. And now I have to go around to not make that fall. Because that's going to cause issues. Alright, so about the strat I found. You see those small paintings next to the stairs over there? Uh, what people used to do was walk off the stairs, grab them, and then walk underneath the stairs and around. But I discovered that you can grab those while standing on the stairs, which you'll be seeing me do in just... Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll do it right now. There, just like that. Now line them. I didn't want to grab that. Now, the paintings are interesting. They have very interesting physics to them. Okay, let me push that a little way away so I can grab the paintings comfortably. Some of the paintings are going to try to push you away from the wall as if uh, you had magnets with... If you were, like, magnets with the same polarity. Also, yeah, we just walked over a painting... And broke it. And hanging it back up upside down. Don't worry about it. Now here's the, the main puzzle of, uh, of this stage. I'm gonna bring this, uh, this... This set of stairs over. Okay, I'll do I'll do that one later. Let's do this painting first. So yeah, now you're gonna see the paintings trying to push me off the wall. Breaking randomly. Come on, I just need to get a hang prompt. I'm trying not to mash hang prompt, because that's just gonna make me hang it up and grab it again. Okay, that's fine. We'll hang that one there. We get another shot at this. With this one. There we go. Got that one in. Alright. We're gonna hang that one up all the way over there. That one over there. And the final one. Right over here. Put these are over here. We're almost uh, we're almost done with the paintings. Yeah, there's no like specific order. You have to put them in if they fit multiple ways. Just as long as they're all uh, as long as they all fit, it's fine. Like so. Now we're gonna pick this big purple painting. Drop it down. Have it break that. And that reveals this this little place to put this painting. Now how are we going to get this up there? Well, there's a fun little thing to do at the end here. 
we just use the actual painting as the stairs. I just need to try and pick the painting back up, and that's the uh, that's our gallery. All right, second to last stage coming up. Eight oh two, the archives. Now here you're going to see an item that I don't think you see the entire game. I think this is actually the first place you see this item. And it's like the second to last stage. Or at least the second to last floor. Vacuums. And we're going to be using them. Not that one though. You can, you can see it right there a little bit in the corner. Okay, so let's make our way to the uh, the vacuum we're actually going to use. This, this needs to go into the green area, so... Pull this. Whoa. That's good. I want that out of my way while I try to get this, this one moving. Okay, it's just not barely in the spot. There we go, now it's in the spot. So I'm going to drag this because it's easier. Open this door. Grab this. Stand in a reasonably specific spot. Break it and... Yeah, it, it usually goes too far. But, you know, you can just do that. Yeah, there we go. It works. So now, more clever use of game mechanics. Alright. Yeah! Nice. First try. Oh yeah, Cruel, how much are you crying at seeing the physics this game has? It, it must be upsetting. Oh no, not really. It's been uh, it's been a joy to watch for the most of it, honestly. I've seen quite a few bits of this. Yeah, also we're not done using paintings. <laughs> right there. Yeah, I'd seen quite a few bits of this run beforehand, and I was kind of looking forward to seeing this in the first place, so... It has not disappointed so far. So... So again... Easier rolling by walking into it, rather than actually using the roll action. And now we're going to use this to uh, just vacuum the marble over. Good, that gets destroyed, so it's not my way anymore. And three out of three. Get the marble in. Okay, we're on to our final level. Floor 9 Penthouse. Yeah, I like the promotion, beating the promotion level, beating the final level of a floor lets you move for a bit before the promotion prompt comes up. And now there's no overworld here. The, it throws you directly into the stage. Here, I'll walk out of the elevator and boom, it starts loading the stage. Now there's some there again there's some really interesting strats uh, this game has to go fast. You can see these uh, NPCs that they may have made more significant by giving them colored clothing. Yeah, the executives here are 25. So we got 25 executives to gather. Here's the first two, and here's number three. I'm gonna try. He's gonna press the button for me. I'm gonna press it again and make it go down. And just slip through it. And they can't drop aggro. They only drop aggro if something distracts them. They can't drop aggro from being too far away from you. Crash the party. Get these executives to get moving. Uh, I want to grab this bottle. And point it directly down. You'll see what that does in a moment. Yeah, you can see the other executives. They went around, so they're still on me. If you see the exclamation point... They've noticed you. You kind of need to need it, need it touch them, and then yeah, they'll uh, they'll do their thing. You, uh, come here, you. And then as I touch this person, I'm gonna start firing the the uh, yeah, firing the champagne bottle upside down, and it pushes me up. Uh, this elevator's broken, 
So you can't use it. So I have to get that guy that way. Get this guy this way. And then they're going to get stuck here. I'm not going to pick those two guys up. Because I'm going to break my way in here a different way. Didn't work again. Okay. Cool. That's good enough. Okay. So. Get them. End the video game session here. Pick you up. And now we're going to grab this plug here. To open to open this door, which is what you're supposed to do. Now, we're going to re-grab everyone. Uh, I think this person is still confused. Do we have, have we got everyone? Okay, good. Really got everyone? Good. You really want to make sure you have everyone. And then, last person is here. Now, if you were really keen and paid attention... Uh, also, very, very important run validation. Knock over the coffee. If you don't knock over the coffee, it runs invalid. No, but seriously. Um, you'll notice that we picked up 24 people, if you were really keen. Get ready on time, by the way. The 25th executive is you. So you sit down in the chair. So when 25 pops up, the, the final cutscene instantly starts and that's when time is. 21, 23, 25, time! GG double! Oh, it's over. And yeah, I'll, I'll let this cutscene play since the run's done. So... They take away your hat and they give you the executive hat. You're the new CEO of the company. You've worked your way up completely legitimately and not at all ruining the company in the process. Nah, you press the switch. It was super safe. You celebrate and then the credits will spawn. Oh, do I want to know my time? Uh, you went 34 seconds over estimate. Okay, 150, 34. I'll take that with... Uh, yeah, if the, if the robot way worse, let me tell you. you so much, you would have you would have been under. Yeah, seven o seven o three was the real culprit. Um, oh. Anyway, uh, double. Any final words uh, before we uh, move on to the next game? Yeah, I, I see the recall were behind on schedule and we're slightly off to overestimate, so I'll make it quick. Zeta, don't worry, I got you. So, amazing game. Go try it out. Go buy it. It's on available on Switch. Uh, if you want to check out the speedrun Discord, uh, yeah, check out the Discord. Get involved in speedrunning, if that's the thing you want to do. Speedrun.com slash good underscore job. Discord link is there. If there's not, I'll scream at the mods to make one. My name's Double Double. If you want more of my stuff, you can follow me at twitch.tv slash double double. D-O-U-B-L-E-D-U-B-B-A-L. And yeah, that's uh, that's mostly what I was going to say. I hope you enjoyed. I tried to make the best of it. See you all and goodbye. All right. Thank you, Double, for uh, the run of Good Job. We will be going into a quick intermission, and then we're going to be moving on to The Witness. Uh, that'll also be it for me. Uh, Picastroff will be taking over for me. So uh, yeah, have fun with the rest of the event, and thank you very much for joining us.